Our next guest is an Emmy Award-winning writer and actress you know from her work on Saturday Night Live in the shows Mapleworth Murders and Girls 5 Eva. She stars in AP Bio, which is streaming now on Peacock. Let's take a look. Did a tornado really kill your grandfather? My grandfathers! It killed both of them. They went out to distract it. So me and my Mimas could get in the root cellar and it scooped them up and slammed them together like a pair of dirty flip-flops. And then I turned back to look. They popped like two water balloons full of SpaghettiOs. They popped my pop-ups. And now it's coming back to get me to finish the job. Please welcome back to the show one of the funniest people on the planet, our very good friend, Paula Pell. Hello, Paula. <laughs> it's so good to see you. You're looking resplendent. You are looking dressed the way an Emmy-nominated actress should look. Well, thank you so much. I wanted to zip up my Zoom and just wear a little bit of sparkles for you. And uh, I feel, I, I can't believe we're having such an orthopedic uh, episode of your show because of uh, Amanda with her pickleball uh, shoulder and I just got a knee replacement because I have BJ knee. <laughs> I'm so sorry that just got diagnosed. I only, I only kneel on one knee. It's very formal when I do it. It's very seldom I do it. I'm well, that's, I think that's that's the British style, right? One knee. That's that's a BBJ. Um, I would. I, it, this also is the sort of an homage to Broadway coming back, which I'm so excited about, and also my favorite New York memory, which was going into therapy one time and some man coming down the stairs from this building and he had sort of a sparkle scarf on and he clearly had been at voice lessons and he was in the hall, which the, had good acoustics and he was singing, give them the old razzle dazzle. <laughs> and it was clear to me that the teacher had told him that he was swallowing his vowels, you know, because in choir they tell you like razzle, drazzle, dazzle. You have to razzle, dazzle. You create space in there. Now, did you, uh, when you were looking for a therapist, did you try to find one that was in a building with a voice coach? You know, in New York, you don't have a choice. You <laughs> might be in there and someone's cooking pierogies next door. It's just, there's a there's just a weird amalgam of people in uh, New York apartments. You, um, uh, I, I wanna uh, point out that your Emmy nomination is uh, uh, for uh, Mapleworth Murders. There you are with uh, also Emmy nominated and late night writer John Lutz. Um, and, and so exciting uh, that AP Bio is back. Helen is one of my favorite characters on TV. An optimist, wouldn't you describe her as an optimist? Yes, an optimist. I love doing Helen. She reminds me a lot of my uh, Midwestern roots of my, of all the, similar to the South of, of women that smile and completely lie to you. And um, so my grandma, you know, she just always was full of enthusiasm and cheer. And then you'd get little moments of, of uh, truth. Like she used to, we used to, I used to take her to a little diner called the pine cone. Oh God, <laughs> and how, let's go to the pine cone. We go to the pine cone and get soup, raviolas they call them, which is like tortellini soup. Oh, is this soup ever good? Oh, and how? And she'd call the manager over to specifically tell him how good the soup is. She had her little saltines. Oh, this soup is just, and the broth. Oh my God. And then we'd leave and in the parking lot, she'd go, I didn't care for that soup. <laughs> Cause you know, so Helen has that like very dark underbelly that we're seeing more and more in each season where she's kind of full of it in terms of her uh, you know, she's she's a very suppressed, more dark soul that that's always laced in in uh, cheer because that keeps her wanting to live. <laughs> so. We uh, uh, we have certainly been an enjoyable journey, and then a really fun thing that happened this year is your uh, real life uh, uh, wife Janine uh, played one of Helen's hookups. Um, yeah. that must have been both nice, and then it actually happened on another show this year. Yes, two two shows that can't, people can't stop visualizing us together. We must have really good chemistry. We should probably meet and get to know each other. Um, 
it was super funny whenever I shot with her this year because bo both times it was of a, of a sexual nature and a, and a romantic nature. And it was so funny because you forget that not everyone in the crew knows what's going on. And, you know, the writers knew and the producers knew that that was my wife, but a lot of the crew didn't. And so we're like, you know, making out in a, in a bar and going into the bathroom to hook up and, and uh, in between, you know, I hadn't seen her in a while because I was in California shooting. And so the two of us were like very affectionate. And I mean, we weren't like tonguing each other, but we were just like, you know, being cozy and talking in little whispers and everything. And then I'd look around and people are like, it's 2021. Like Paula needs to cool it on the <laughs> special guest on the show. Like just meet her outside the production, you know?